All your career, you was trash. You deserve a tap now. We all know about the bright side of fame. After all, it's fed to us on a continuous 24 hour news cycle on every type of screen imaginable. But for every news story that shines a light on all the positive aspects of a celebrity, well, there are also those stories that have fallen through the cracks because they cast the industry in a less than favorable light. These stories will we deal with the dark side of fame, and that's exactly what this series is all about. For today's episode, we're focusing on the story of a man whose career has been villainized by mainstream media outlets. In his own words, he rapped, and all the controversy circles me, and it seems like the media immediately points a finger at me. So I point one back at him, but not the index or pinky. Now his lyrics, they've been combed over his personal life and public appearances, documented, analyzed, and picked apart. And this is all while dealing with drug addiction, lawsuits, and divorce. Now Eminem, he has managed to stay on the tip of everyone's lips for the past 20 years plus. Now on the bright side of fame, well few rappers they've ever achieved the type of global success that Eminem has. Now his early work like the Slim Shady LP, the Marshall Mathers LP, and the Eminem Show, well they transformed him into one of the most influential artists of all time. He also broke down racial barriers when it came to the acceptance of white rappers in popular music. Something that really hadn't been done since, well, Elvis. Hip hop at the time Eminem came out more than ever was more biased and more racial than ever. Right. There's no way hip hop would have gave it up to a white boy unless he was f phenomenal. And yeah. when he came out, he was so nasty. He was phenomenal. He ranks among the best selling music artists ever with an estimated worldwide sales of more than 200 million records. And in the first decade of the 2000s, well, he was the top selling musician in all of the United States. Now songs like Lose Yourself, Love the Way You Lie and Not Afraid have all gone certified diamond and he's won 15 Grammys, 8 American Music Awards, 17 Billboard Music Awards, and yes, even an Academy Award. The Oscar goes to Eminem, Jeff Bass, and Luis Resto for Lose Yourself from 8 Mile. But on the dark side of fame, well, it's a different story altogether. Now Marshall, he was a child of a broken home with an absent father and a troubled relationship with his mother. Now as he grew older and found success, well, he rallied against drugs and alcohol abuse, dealt with a failed marriage, and he had to defend himself from lawsuits filed against him by his own family members. Debbie Mathers is talking publicly for the first Lots time since her song. famous son skewered oh, her in song. Pieces. And she's fighting back both in court filing a $10 million slander suit against him. And that's far from all of it. Outcries of homophobia, misogyny, violent anger issues, public revenge fantasies, and more beef with other musicians than you could possibly imagine were soon to fall out. And we ain't even talking about his alias Slim Shady, who rapped about confessions of murder, rape, DUIs, and a whole lot more. No truth be told, Eminem, he's found himself in the middle of so much trouble that it's gonna be impossible to cram all of these controversies into just one video, but I'm sure as hell gonna try. So I hope you guys will join us as I take a look at Eminem's plunge into the dark side of fame. What's going on guys, it's your boy Michael McCrudden back at it again with a brand new episode in our series, The Dark Side of Fame. Now other drops in this series include Lil Uzi Vert and Kanye West. Let us know who's next in the comments down below and I'll see you after the intro. What do you like to be called? Eminem Slim Marshall. Eminem Slim Marshall, in my mind. <laughs> you, know, you can call me. Eminem was born Marshall Bruce Mathers III on October 17, 1972, in St. Joseph, Missouri. An only child, Em's life got off to an inauspicious start when his mom, Debbie, well, she almost lost her life during the 73 hours it took to give birth to him. His dad split not long after, which forced Em and Debbie to move around a whole bunch, rarely staying for more than a year or so in one place. Now, Emmy would write letters to his father during these difficult years in his life that would always get sent back, marked return to sender. A little Elvis irony right there. But his father wasn't the only family member that Em would lose. His uncle Ronnie, the man who introduced him to rap in the first place, he committed suicide in 1991. Now after that happened, well, Emmy stopped speaking for days and he couldn't bring himself to attend his uncle's funeral. My, my uncle Ronnie started liking rap before I did and then he kind of introduced me to it. In songs like Cleaning Out My Closet and My Mom, while well, Emmy would open a window into his childhood for his fans, suggesting that his mother convinced him that he was sick when he wasn't, and that Debbie had a Valium addiction that she would share with her young son by sprinkling the drugs into his food to keep him under control. Now he believes this would play a huge role in his addiction to that same drug later on in his life. Now as Em grew older, he struggled to make it as a musician in his early to mid 90s. Now between his mother, his relationship with Kim Scott, and the subsequent birth of their daughter Haley, well Emmy 
was under a lot of pressure to provide for more than just himself. He dropped an album titled Infinite in 1996, but it was a commercial failure, and Emmy felt like he had reached the end of his rope. Now, to make matters worse, it was the holiday season and around five days before Christmas, well, he was fired from his job as a dishwasher at a family restaurant. Now, his entire life, it was imploding, and it culminated in a suicide attempt. Now, thankfully, M, he survived. He picked up the pieces and developed Slim Shady, a sadistic and violent alter ego. Now, M, he had finally found a way to express all the rage and anger that he felt within himself. In 1997, he recorded the Slim Shady EP, which explored topics like drug use, sex, mental instability, and violence. What's more, it was a bonafide hit. Seemingly overnight, M, he had transformed himself into a hip-hop supervillain, and his new angle was to double down on controversy, confrontation, and shock tactics. He told Spin, If you think I'm an ass, then I'm gonna show you an asshole. If you call me a misogynist, I'm a misogynist. If you say I hate gay people, then I hate gay people. People started calling me shit, so I just became whatever they said I was. His unbelievable success would see him become one of the fastest selling acts in the world, but at the same time, he had to deal with the fallout that few other artists had ever contended with, like possibly being banned from the country of Canada for committing hate crimes against women in his lyrics. It never happened, but it sure as hell was discussed. It was a big deal. The activist groups, um, they were protesting outside the concerts. They were, you know, like really trying to make it hard for my guy. And, and they like made him the poster child of everything wrong with America. And it was like, really? There's like a lot of other before Eminem that you guys can f You know what I'm saying? What city was that? Uh, that was in Toronto. Now, of course, his EP was chock full of pop culture callouts aimed at everyone from the Spice Girls to Bill Clinton. But Emmy got into his first real beef with fellow Detroit act, the Insane Clown Posse in 1997. Now, prior to his explosion in popularity, Will M suggested on an advertising flyer that ICP, well, they would be showing up at one of his concerts, even though no such arrangement had ever been made. Now, this set off a back and forth that resulted in ICP songs like Slim Anus and Please Don't Hate Me. Now, Emmy responded by publicly berating the group in all types of creative ways. With the controversial content M was drumming up, well, legal issues were inevitability. In 1999, his own mother sued him, claiming he was slandering her in his music. Now, the litigation had ended two years later, and for all her efforts, well, Debbie, she walked away with a whopping $1,600 after she paid all her legal fees. She got 25K, but only 1,600 bucks in her bank. Now, M's run-ins with the law, they didn't only have to do with the complicated family situation that he was coming out of. Now, his own anger control issues created a whole bunch more. Like in the year 2000, when he was arrested in Royal Oak, Michigan for pulling an unloaded gun out in a fight and pointing it at the ground. Now, the very next day, he was arrested again, this time in Warren, Michigan, for assaulting a man in the parking lot of the Hot Rock Cafe when he thought he saw Kim kissing another guy. Now, this is an event that he would memorialize in the Kiss skit off his record, The Eminem Show. Now, Em would plead guilty to these crimes and receive two years probation. Not long after, well, Kim, she would sue Em for defamation and try to take her own life after Em publicly performed the song Kim, a track notorious for describing her violent death while she was there in person at one of his shows. Watching everybody else sing the words and laughing and jumping around and like approval of just, I couldn't take it, I don't know. And uh, I made it home and I just, I could not gather my senses. I just, and I went upstairs in my bathroom and I slit my wrist and ended up in the hospital. Now thankfully, Kim, she survived, but the two, they would eventually divorce in 2001 after only having been married less than two years. Now, despite once famously telling Rolling Stone, I would rather have a baby through my penis than get married again. Still, the two, they briefly remarried in January of 2006, but by April of that same year, Will M, he was filing for divorce once again. Now, as much trouble as his behavior was making for him, well, his music was equally as controversial. In 2002, French jazz pianist Jacques Lucier, well, he filed a $10 million lawsuit suggesting that M and Dr. Dre had taken the beat for Kill You from his instrumental piece, Pulsion. Now, the case was later settled out of court. The next year, the United States Secret Service opened a file on M after allegations that he threatened the sitting US President, George W. Bush, in the track, We As Americans. This is where he rapped. I don't rap for dead presidents. I'd rather see the president dead. It's never been said, but I said presidents. During this time, he was engaged in other infamous beefs, including one with Everlast, when they felt slighted after a brief run-in with M and let him know about it in the song, Eardrums Pop, remix. Now, Emmy responded with I Remember, and then Everlast, they hit back with Whitey's Revenge, wherein he told Slim to check on his kid's DNA, which really set Em off. Now, Em and Emmy fired back with Quitter, but when longtime friend Limp Biscuit refused to help out with the song, well, Em pulled them into the mess as well. When the song was eventually released, well, Limp Biscuit member DJ Lethal, well, he suggested that if Em and Everlast were to ever fight, well, Em, he would wind up on the losing side. 
Now there are plenty of other beefs over the years. He struck out against Michael Jackson in his music video for Just Lose It, which ended up with Steve Harvey declaring that M, he had lost his ghetto pass, we want the pass back. Then there was the constant hinting towards a relationship with Christmas superstar Mariah Carey, a claim that she outright denies in her song Obsessed and the accompanying music video. Now the word is the two they had a few dates, M, he got overly excited a little too early on, and then like she ended up marrying Nick Cannon which makes sense why those two, well, they never get along. Now the MGK beef, that dates back to some old tweets Colson made about M's daughter early on in his career. And then there's Moby who tried to take M to task early on in his career for just about everything the rapper has ever said. A few years ago, uh, I criticized Eminem for writing lyrics that were misogynistic and homophobic. And then we had a, a feud where he dressed up like me in the video and criticized me in a song and attacked me at the MTV Awards, um, and a part of me thinks that I should thank him for all of that free publicity. It should probably be said that almost all of these feuds, they've died off over the years, with most parties stating that it was water under the bridge at this point in time. That is, with the exception of MGK, those two won't be collaborating anytime soon. Nick Cannon as well, but who wants to collaborate with Nick? Anyway, let's move on. Now besides beefing and the legal controversies, M, he's also battled with addiction in his life. This includes drugs like Vicodin, Ambien, and Valium. Now he first attempted to straighten himself out around 2002, but that was the same year he was filming the movie version of his life story, we're talking 8 Mile. Now during production of the film, well M, he was working 16 hour days and he developed insomnia. Now someone he knew gave him Ambien for the first time and within a couple of years, well it got to the point where he was taking pills not to get high, but just to feel normal. He was consuming anywhere from 40 to 60 Valium a day. It was a problem when I went to rehab in 2005. And you know, I came out and I wasn't really taking rehab serious. And I came out, I relapsed, and then, you know, the proof thing happened, and then I kind of just went way overboard. Yeah, I just kind of lost it. In 2007, M would be hospitalized after a methadone overdose. Now, he had first bought the drug after a dealer told him that it was easier on his liver than Vicodin. Now, he used the drug until he collapsed in his bathroom one night, and he was rushed to the hospital, where doctors told him that he ingested the equivalent to four bags of heroin. You, you almost died. Yeah, definitely. How close do you think you were to dying? They said two hours. If I would have got to the hospital two hours later, that would have been it. Because my organs, everything, my kidneys, everything were failing. Everything was shutting down. After he returned home while his drug use, it ran right back up to where it was before. Knowing that this lifestyle couldn't be sustained, well, M, he eventually fought to get clean. He sought help from a rehabilitation counselor and he began an exercise program that emphasized on running. Now he would rely on Elton John to mentor him through this hardship and he would call M once a week to check in on him. Eventually, M, he would kick all of his habits and he's been sober since April of 2008. One of the best things that's ever happened to me. I'm able to see things clear. I'm able to remember things. I mean, this is how I decided that I want to live my life and I don't ever want to go back. Another controversy in the life of Eminem has been the constant accusation of homophobia due to his frequent usage of derogatory language. In fact, he got to the point where in 2010, Anderson Cooper will really explored the issue in an interview with M. The scene that I came up in, that word was thrown around so much, you know? It was like, it was thrown around constantly to each other, like, in battling. That was but, just my... But, I mean, do, do you not like gay people? No, I don't have any problem with nobody. In that same year, the New York Times, they asked him for his thoughts on same-sex marriage, and he replied, I think if two people love each other, then what the hell? I think that everyone should have the chance to be equally miserable, if they want. Despite his constant rebuffing of these accusations and his friendship with LGBTQ icons like Elton John, well, Amy continues to face accusations in this regard as recently as 2018, when he was called out for using the same type of hateful language when discussing rapper Tyler, the creator. On the album, was on that song was one of the things where I felt like this might be too far because in my in my the homophobic in my slur. quest yeah, yeah, yeah in my quest to hurt him uh -huh. I realized that I was hurting a lot of other people by saying it. So is Eminem getting more amicable in his later years? Well, it's possible, but unlikely. Now, after all, this is the same man who on his most recent album, Music To Be Murdered By, well, he talks about both the Las Vegas shooting and the Manchester bombing of recent years. 
and he pissed off a whole bunch of people in the process. So much so that Emily responded in typical fashion with the following social media post. This album was not made for the squeamish. Yeah, I'd say Eminem still got in both terms of talent and in the darkness department. But what do you guys think about his brush with the dark side of fame? Obviously, he is a living legend and we'll be talking about him for many years to come. Let us know uh, what you thought about this video. Let us know what you think about the dark side of fame. Also, let us know who's next. My name is Mike McCrudden. We're going to wrap up this video here. Be sure to let us know who's next. And uh, I'll be reading your comments. I hope Eminem... I think Eminem watches some of these videos, which is super weird. I wouldn't piss him off. Although, if I did get a shout out in one of his songs, even if it was like, like a jab, man, that would really... That would pretty much, uh, that would uh, solidify, I've done a lot here, and probably be enough for me to just say, okay, my work here is done. M knows who I am. Anyway, I'll see you guys in another video. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Now, we drop a new video each and every day, so here's a recent drop that you might enjoy. We handpicked that one for you, because if you like this video, you'll probably like that. We also got playlists like over here. So click on that if you want to see a whole list of a bunch of videos we've dropped in the past. And if you're new to the Fame Gang, be sure to subscribe and turn on them post notifications. And I'll see you guys in another video. Boom!